Hello, welcome to Nag 3D Designs, and today we're gonna tear this thing apart. So, what we have here is a DaVinci Duo first gen. You can tell because it's still got the gray covers as opposed to the new blue ones. It'll also have the older circuit board with the removable stepper motor chips or stepper motor drivers. So, let's see what they sent me. Got this off of eBay, dirt cheap. Condition, don't remember. Gonna assume it's broke. Uh, they sent me the XYZ wear CD-ROM junk. They actually took the time to print the service manual or the product manual junk. Sent me the XYZ scraping spatula. Ah, they bent the corner. Wire brush, I can use that. Power and USB cables, I can use that. All right, so first thing, let's take the door off. Press just a little bit right here in the middle. Bend it a little bit. The bottom will usually pop right loose. Swing out, doors off. Take side panels off next. We'll lift the top cover. Grab a flathead screwdriver. Pop this as far as it can go. Pop this. Lean this out. Pull it past and it's off. And I can already see that somebody had a problem with the wiring shorting out and causing layer shifts. But we'll come back to that. Take the other side off, same thing. Pry it out, pop it loose. Second side panel up. Take this back cover off here. Pop this little side clip out. Top off. Now let's take the display off. To do that, there are two little clips on the inside, tabs on the inside. They're about right here. Same spot over here. You're gonna push them out. I'm gonna give you a quick view of it so you can see what they look like. Right there it is. See it? And you just push it out and it pops the top up. Pop the second one. Also beware, they didn't take the time to smooth these edges. They will cut you. Pop that loose, don't go too far because you still have a ribbon cable connected to your control panel. Give it a tug straight off that way. And display panel is removed. Let's see. Now we'll take off this piece here. I suggest getting one of these handy dandy little holders. It's got a magnetic base so it keeps the screws in place and I can stick it on the base when I'm working from the other side. All Da Vinci's are held together with torque screws. You will need a 10 by four torx driver to take all these screws out. There are six holding this top panel. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Get that wire out of my way. And for anybody who likes to keep track as to what screw goes where, these are ones that do not have the serrated washer. They are machine screws and they are 10 millimeters long. Get this piece off, voila. Now let's take this back access panel off. Figure out and get rid of these two wires. You've got two plastic thread cutting screws holding it on. They don't have a serrated washer and they are 10 millimeters long. Tilt it out, press this little tab down and covers off. Now just go ahead and cut this wire because well obviously we need to replace these anyway. Looks like someone used some old phone wire to repair this. It'll work in a pinch but not what you want to use for 
a reliable repair. Now to remove this bottom panel, you have two more screws. One right here, one right here. Screwdrivers with magnets, great helper. These are machine screws without the washer and they are seven millimeters long. Pop this side loose first, typically. You gotta tilt it that way so it clears the switch and the power plug, but don't go too far because you've got the filament cartridge sensor still connected. Just unplug it from the circuit board and remove this piece. You won't need that filament sensor anymore if you wanna go ahead and take it out and sell it on eBay, throw it in the trash. So we've got all of the things off the back of this we wanna take off right now from this angle. Spin it on around. Need to take this part of the top cover off. There's a tab here and here. Pull it toward you, lift up. Once you've got it loose, only lift a little bit because your lid sensor is still connected. Tilt it forward, pop that connector loose. And if you're lucky, this falls out with it without breaking it because you'll need this at some point, I'm sure. It's the same optical sensor for your end stops. Pull it aside, save it. You might need it for a spare later on down the line. Now we do want these two black rubber fittings right here. Go ahead and pull the PF PTFE tubing out of it. And discard those little pieces. And then give these a tug. And if you don't know what those look like, they look like that right there. Set that aside. Now, let's see, what should we take off next? Oh, we gotta take the drip trays out. Because we're gonna put in a wider 200 by 200 print bed, we're gonna have to replace these drip trays or not put them in at all. I did make up replacement drip trays just because I wanted people to have a complete kit. These are thread cutting screws with the serrated washer and they are 14 millimeters long. You get two holding on each drip tray. Okay, so we get the drip trays out of the way. Let's get rid of the print bed. You've got two Phillips screws right here. Pop those loose. You've got the blue, the two wire blue connector. That is your bed leveler. And you've got the red and black, which is the thermistor for your heated bed. Now, usually there's a bunch of zip ties here. Somebody's already cut them. You've got this connector right here. You want to disconnect this so you can unhook the thermistor. Then we've got to take off the three thumb wheels for the print bed. Give it a slight push down so it's easier to run the thumb wheel down and try not to drop it like I just did. Don't worry, we'll get to that. And the one in the back. Carefully lift up the front, pull the springs out, and lift up the back just a little bit to get that spring out. Feed that thermistor wire up through, and then you've got one blue wire that goes from one back corner to the other. If you press, if you tilt the bed down, you can slide that right over the Z carriage, and then you can feed your wires and everything right out. Only thing we are going to reuse from this is your thermistor. And if you don't have any of these little connectors, well, we'll have to get some more of those or cut these off. Now let's take out the carriage. Again, usually there's a bunch of zip ties on this that someone has already cut. 
So for you, cut the half a dozen or so zip ties that are holding all the wires in place. Yeah, disconnect these two wires off the stepper motors. Disconnect this wire here from the circuit board. And then disconnect the red wires from one heater cartridge and the white wires from the other. Set aside that cable. Now, to take out this carriage. First thing you have to do is take the, the screw out of the tensioner. Right there. This is one of those thread cutting screws with the serrated washer that is 12 millimeters. Now, so you can see this, I'm gonna move the camera here. Okay. Okay, so you got the tensioner button here. You're gonna push in on it as hard as you can. You're gonna grab these belts and you're gonna lift up and you're gonna get the belt with the pulley. Take the pulley, pull this little tensioner assembly out, make sure you catch that spring. We're gonna print a new one of these because we're gonna put bearings on this so it doesn't eat it up anymore. Now, we're gonna take the belt off of the carriage. As you can see there, there are two screws and two metal tabs that hold that belt in place. We're gonna take those off. Thread cutting screws, no washer, 10 millimeter. Slide the little tabs out and then pull the belt forward and belts off. Now we can remove this carriage. To do that, we're going to take out these two screws right here. These are standard machine screws without a washer that are seven millimeters long. Now when I'm done taking the carriage out, I'm going to put this piece back in place and I want to be able to keep the carriage out so it's not flopping around. So I'm going to save one of these screws set aside. Now we need to disconnect the belt. To do that, I'm going to push the front edge out and pull it on top. See there? We're going to do the same over here. Then we're going to push it all the way across. Now it's unhooked from the carriage. Now we just have to pop this off that way. Some of these are on tighter than others. Some of them are still glued in place depending on how much the person before you messed with it. Got it popped off. Take this off. Let the bar tilt down and slide out the carriage. Ta-da! We'll reuse these stepper motors. We'll save these fans, maybe use one of them for a cooling fan and we'll need all these bushings or at least four of them for the new carriage. Now I'm just gonna put this back up in place again to keep this from flopping around. And last thing we're gonna do is I like to take and move this power switch up here to the front because, well, I'm lazy and I don't like reaching all the way to the back and I have half a dozen printers over here on my rack. Yeah, pain in the butt. Much easier, I can just walk down and go click, 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 click and turn them all on. So, we're gonna take this bottom base off. It's tabbed under on this end, so you're gonna start down at this end, pop it out, lift it up, take it out. OK, 
Okay, so to take the base off, we're gonna take out these four screws first. There's one in each corner here. They are thread cutting with the serrated washer and they are 14 millimeters long. Now we can tilt this back. And you've got plastic tabs that hold this connected to the metal plate here. You got two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Just give it a little forward you know, pressure this way. Twist the plastic. As you start in the corner, get that loose. Let me try to figure out what just fell. Oh, I see. The thumb wheel I dropped earlier. All right, so the stepper motor wire is run through this plastic panel, through this hole here, to the back of the stepper. So if you don't disconnect it first, most likely it will just pull itself loose, but we don't want to damage that. Now we can lift up and pull this off and find all the nifty little shavings people have left behind. There's our base. And that wire was fed through here and down under through here, so when we do put this back, we're gonna cut this off. We're gonna trim some stuff out of here, make a nice switch spot down, down here, and move the switch to the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this stepper motor and stand it back up. Now, there's a whole lot more I could take out of here right now, but a lot of it's gonna be pull it out, swap out a part, put it back. We're gonna change out the four bushings here on these rods where the bearings are because, well, they crack, they break, and then your, your belts get loose. That's never a good thing. So, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Hey. Down here, hold on, wait a second. Oh, I'm too small. Let me make myself a little bit bigger so you can see me. Hold on, ready? Ugh. Okay, so almost forgot to tell you. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, click the link below and subscribe. And hey, ring that bell too so you know when I release my next video. And uh, one more thing, if you're doing my upgrade, there's homework for next episode. Check the links below. Back to that guy. Ugh. So remember, if it ain't broke, upgrade it. In this case, well, it's broke, but we're still going to upgrade it. Till next time. <laughs>